Hey everybody, I am Pastor Rob Lloyd of the South Edmiston Community Church. I haven't come to you lately with a whole lot of posts or videos or anything, and I need to apologize for that. Life has been a little bit crazy with work, got a different job, working a lot more hours, that type of thing. So I haven't had a whole lot of time to be doing it because where I am, most of the time has no signal. So uh, today I have signal. I have a little bit of time while I'm unloading a load of propane. I'm going to be glancing off to my right to look in the mirror occasionally during this video, but uh, that's what we got to do when we're doing two jobs at once. So today we're going to look at a parable in Mark chapter 4. It's the parable of the sower on the pastor's, uh, yeah, it's my office. Stick around. Alright, so Mark chapter 4, and we're going to be starting right out with verse 1. We're going to be looking at it in the English Standard Version. And I hope this doesn't jiggle around too much because I'm trying to hold you in a hand and anybody knows me knows i got shaky hands. So, reading and holding the Bible with one hand and holding you guys with another hand. So, I'll do my best to see what we can do. But let's look at Mark chapter 4. Again, he began to teach beside the sea. And a very large crowd gathered about him, so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, Listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. And as he sowed, some seed fell along the path. And the birds came and devoured it. Other seed fell on rocky ground, and where it did not have much soil, it immediately spr it sprang up, since it had no depth of soil. And when the sun rose, it was scorched, and since it had no root, it withered away. Other seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked it, and it yielded no grain. And other seeds fell into good soil, and produced grain growing up and increasing, and yielding thirtyfold, and sixtyfold, and a hundredfold. And he said, He who has ears let him hear. Now Jesus spoke a lot in parable form and this is one of the few that he actually went and uh, explained it afterwards to his disciples and he explained also why he was speaking in parables. So let's go on in the chapter here coming back in at verse number 10. And when he was alone those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables and he said to them to you it has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see, but not perceive. And they may indeed hear, but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. And he said to them, Do you not understand the parable? How then will you understand all the parables? The sower sows the word. And these are the ones along the path, where the word is sown, when they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes the word that is sown in them. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. And then they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. And others are the ones sown among thorns. They are those who hear the word, but the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of riches and the desires for other things enter and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. Now again, this, this parable kind of popped into my mind this morning as I was driving along and thought I'd, I'd bring it to you. But I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Number one question, which of these people are you? Are you, maybe how it starts out and, and, and you hear the word or you've heard the word and Satan came quickly and, and stole the word away from you. You're not a believer 
or maybe you're a little bit farther along the way, but you don't have much root. Maybe somebody witnessed to you, and maybe in witnessing to you, you might have believed part of it, but not all of it. Or have you really tried? You've tried to, to be in church. You've tried to uh, be part of a church family. You, you've, you've put in some effort. Then the things of the world came along. You know, you, you couldn't make it to church this one Sunday, or you couldn't go to a Bible study this week, or you couldn't whatever. And then next week came, and then the following week came, and you just fell away. Maybe you're in that camp. Maybe you're in the camp that's the last one spoken about here, where the seed is growing, and that seed is 30 fold, or fold, or or 60 fold, or a hundred fold. It is growing and bearing much fruit. That's that's where we all need to be. That's where Jesus wants us. He wants us to be fertile soil so that when any seed is sown in us, it will grow like crazy. We will bear fruit in amazing ways. But there's another side to this as well. Are we a sower of seeds? It's hard to be a sower of good seeds unless we are in that last group where we are bearing fruit. And those fruit will be bearing good seed. Or we can be in one of those other camps and we can be bearing bad seed. We could be tossing out bad seed to others. And we could be teaching them that the cares of the world are more important than being with Christ. See, the, the type of seed we sow makes all the difference in the world. Each one of us sows some sort of a seed. Each one of us is having seeds sown in us. Are we making the ground fertile? Are we making our mind, our heart, fertile soil for those seeds to grow when they're good seed? Do we understand the difference between good seed and bad seed when it comes our way? There's a lot of thoughts that we can go to when we we think about this parable because we might be great fertile ground, but when we're getting bad seed, that bad seed grows in us. We need to know the difference between good seed and bad seed. The best way to know the difference between good seed and bad seed is to get into God's holy word. It's to read your Bible. Be a part of a church family. Find out what the good seed truly is so that when it comes time for us to sow seed or us to receive seed from someone else, we can differentiate what the difference is between the good and the bad. Only receive the good and only sow the good. It is not, however, our job our purpose, our responsibility to judge someone else when sowing seed in their life where they are. They can be flat out blacktop and concrete where nothing is going to grow. But we don't know that. What we do know is we're called to sow seeds. So I want to challenge you with that today. Sow some good seed in someone today doesn't matter what you think of that person. It could be one of your best friends. It could be family. It could be one of your worst enemies. Sow some good seed in their life. If it's blacktop and concrete heart, well, it'll fall by the wayside. But maybe their heart is open. Maybe they're actually searching for something, even though they don't come to you and talk to you about it. Maybe they are trying to become fertile and just don't know how to do it. And if that's the case, lead them. Sow more seed. Show them what it means to be fertile ground. I want to thank you for sticking around to this, to the end of this quick little video. I apologize for not making more videos. I'm going to try to be doing that as I uh, deliver places that have a little more signal so I can do this. But... Until we get together next time, may God bless each and every one of you very richly today and sow some seed with just the good stuff.